Hello my medical smarties! Welcome back to Med Made Easy, your channel for making medical topics much easier to learn and remember. Today we're going to talk about fibromyalgia, different signs and symptoms of fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a condition that is characterized by chronic widespread pain. It is typically in women during the ages of 20 to 60 years old. And there does tend to be a familial connection in individuals who have fibromyalgia, but it is important to note that environmental factors play a major role in the flares of fibromyalgia. So let's jump right into one of the first signs that an individual may have fibromyalgia, fatigue unrelieved by rest. This is huge. These individuals, they can get eight hours of sleep or two hours of sleep, 10 hours of sleep. It doesn't matter. A lot of times they'll wake up and they just don't feel like they even slept despite the hours that they actually slept. Other conditions like thyroid disease, diabetes, sleep apnea, vitamin D deficiency, and many other conditions may need to be ruled out first before determining whether or not um, an individual has fibromyalgia because these are things that can also cause fatigue that's unrelieved by rest. Some of this fatigue may be due to the fact that these individuals often have sleep disturbances. It's a very common finding in individuals who have fibromyalgia. They may have disrupted sleep, difficulties falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep, and just overall poor quality of sleep. This leads us right into the next symptom of fibromyalgia. These individuals often describe a state of mental fog, difficulties concentrating, and memory issues. Sometimes it's called fibro fog. They may also complain about issues with multitasking, and often these issues are the most prevalent in the morning. Stiffness is another common finding in individuals who have fibromyalgia. They also complain of the sensation of being swollen, specifically in the hands. And many times, even though they have the sensation of swelling, there's no physical findings of that swelling. It is believed that fibromyalgia has a lot to do with how your brain and spinal cord processes and interprets pain sensation and other information. These individuals often complain of diffuse pain in multiple areas of their body. It's typically not just in one area, rather multiple areas. Because of this diffuse pain, often these individuals have accompanying conditions like depression, anxiety, and just overall lower quality of life because of this chronic pain that they're having. According to the CDC, there are higher rates of major depression in these individuals who have fibromyalgia approximately three times more likely to have depression than adults without fibromyalgia. Typically, individuals who have fibromyalgia have this type of chronic pain or musculoskeletal pain that's lasted for at least three months. Fibromyalgia often occurs with other rheumatic conditions and types of arthritis, including things like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, osteoarthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis. Another characteristic about fibromyalgia is the noticeable sensitivities to food, odors, noises, and lights. Some may even complain about discomfort with certain fabrics touching their skin and or clothes that may be too tight. These individuals often have uh, diagno other diagnoses like IBS along with the fibromyalgia. Mood disturbances. Mood disturbances are often a sign that an individual may have fibromyalgia, especially if they're having all of these other signs and symptoms that were previously mentioned. Often individuals are prescribed medications can help to treat both the depression and also the pain that they are feeling. So here is a list of some examples of such medications. Now I will note that Savella on the list is one that's not typically used to treat depression, but it works similarly to um, antidepressants. It actually is used to help more with the fibromyalgia pain. There are also some other medications that are specifically prescribed for pain, in general muscle pain, muscle tension, things like that. You have the cyclobenzaprine, which is given for muscle spasm, muscle tension, um, and then uh, you have pregabalin, which is for pain specifically, and also gabapentin, which is for pain specifically. Moving on to the next topic about fibromyalgia, headaches. Headaches are common with individuals who have fibromyalgia. 
exact cause of headaches and fibromyalgia is likely multifactorial. There are several different things that play into this, including sleep issues, low serotonin levels, low magnesium levels, tension that is held often in the muscles, mood disorders. So there's a lot that can contribute to headaches itself. One of the most common types of headaches with fibromyalgia is a tension headache. Tension headaches are often described as a sensation of a vice grip around the head that has a squeezing characteristic in nature. It is typically on both sides and orig often originates at the base of the neck and the shoulder area. Stress, lack of sleep, and fatigue often contribute to these types of headaches. Moving on to our next topic about fibromyalgia. Individuals with fibromyalgia often have irritable bowel syndrome. This is also called IBS. IBS can be either diarrhea or constipation predominant or a little bit of both. Stress, certain foods can often flare IBS. And individuals with fibromyalgia will often complain of bloating, constipation, diarrhea, stomach upset, uh, food intolerances. And that's because it's often, these individuals often also have irritable bowel syndrome. Pain is often relieved with bowel movements and also avoided by controlling certain foods, um, food intake, and also controlling stressors. Also certain medications can help with irritable bowel syndrome. TMJ is also another disorder that often is associated with fibromyalgia. So you may have an individual complaining of um, constant jaw area pain, ear area pain. Um, sometimes these individuals will also grind their teeth in the nighttime so they'll wake up specifically with an aching facial area or cheek jaw pain and a lot of times um, they will feel some stiffness in their um, jaw area as well when they're trying to eat specifically in the morning time a lot of times they may also just complain of difficulties chewing um, when they're trying to eat the key takeaway from this video is truly fibromyalgia awareness there's still a lot that is not understood about fibromyalgia and I think as years go by we'll understand a lot more. There are definitely correlations with certain things such as increased hospitalizations, you're twice as likely to be hospitalized if you have fibromyalgia, a lower quality of life, higher rates of depression as mentioned previously, approximately three times more likely higher rates of suicide, and higher rates of other rheumatic conditions. So this is extremely important that we discuss more about fibromyalgia. I think that it's misunderstood and often just written off as just a, an imaginary illness and often it's a disparity that women face in healthcare. And so it's something that does definitely needs to be focused on and also studied more. Something that's important to note about fibromyalgia is that typically lab studies are normal. Here is a list of multiple symptoms and also diagnoses and conditions that are often related to fibromyalgia. There are many others. These are just a few that are more common that are often seen. And so comment below if you have any specific symptoms that are not on this list and just give us your experience with that. We'd love to be able to hear um, your experience and what helped you um, what didn't help you and what symptoms you may experience. Fibromyalgia is a an extremely tough disorder to deal with on your own and so I think it's extremely important to develop a support group especially with other, other individuals who can understand what you're going through and maybe even share some of their experiences on what helped them, what didn't help them, what the process was like as far as diagnosing and coming to the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. I think that's super important and the awareness is really the key to all of this. So if you feel like sharing your story, please comment below um, your experience, your symptoms, your treatment, if you feel comfortable doing so. I think that's so important and I'd like to kind of um, develop almost a community around this as we learn more about fibromyalgia. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our channel. We make lots of types of videos about medical issues, topics, concerns. This is great for medical professionals and also anybody who just loves to learn about medical stuff. All right, until next time, everyone, take care, be well.